Yeah, 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 this your boy Drama Boy, aka D Boy Fresh, man. Right here off the porch with my dog, Dirty Glove. We beneficial. Hey, yeah. Red tent, red seats, jump straight off the porch. My engine in the back, that's a lot of horse. Hunch All right, let me ask you um, 10, 15 years ago, did you ever think trap music would be global like this? Hell yeah, I knew, I felt trap, you know what I'm saying? Like, I seen trap first. When I'm 13, 14, I'm always with my, my brother, man. Pull up on me, man, we in a trap. Man, pull up on me, man, we behind the Dodge Chicken store, man. Woo, woo, pull up on me, man, we, you know what I'm saying? And that's a location where niggas hustle, get their money. Yeah. Period. Trap, man, it's, you know what I mean? Trapping in the bando, woo, woo, some are abandoned houses, some are grandmama and mama and auntie houses, some is, man, my nigga house who got down just got an empty apartment, woo, woo, it's all kind of different traps. You know what I'm saying? It's however you look at it. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know what I mean? Like, seeing what you see, you paint that picture musically. That's that's how I produce. You know what I mean? So, first and foremost, trap was a location. You know what I mean? That turned into a sound. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? The sound from producers helped pull the rap out of the rappers. The first trap rapper I seen and worked with was Yo Gotti. Yeah. That was the first Coke, Coke, this Coke got from the beginning of time. God had been talking about coke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Talking about that white. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you know, some green, some trees, woo woo woo. But man, for the most part, man, when I met Jeezy, Jeezy was like, boy, I met Jeezy like 18, 19. Jeezy was like, man, nigga, that shit you and your Gotti on. Hmm. When you see me shout it, pop your collar, then you holler, that's what's up. Like that was one of the first big anthems I did for your Gotti. Yeah. You know what I mean? That put us on the map. Then he did Five Star Chick. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just so many. Coming back and back to back to yeah. back to back, you know what I'm saying? Being consistent with hits, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what made a name for me. Pastor Troy called me, uh, Boys in the Hood called me, Young Jeezy, all these cats called me just off of what they was hearing from me doing in Memphis. Yeah. And that was like the first trap rap yeah. artist that I worked with from the beginning of time with Gotti. Hmm. Then I started hearing, I, when I met T.I., T.I. hadn't even put out I'm Serious album yet. Hmm. You know what I mean? I'm playing beats in the parking lot uh, uh, at noontime studios mm. when I'm like 17. Mm. Drove down, and the only reason I'm in noontime studios because my brother cool with Jazzy Faye. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So G Jason Jeter was over there doing some stuff. He's like, man, we got this artist, man, we finna drop, da 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 da. Working on the I'm Serious album. This is when Tip working on the I'm Serious mm. album. I'm playing beats, da 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 da, for Jeter. And, you know, that opportunity, he picked out some beats, da 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 I ain't make the album. Yeah. Next album list, uh, session come, da 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 That's when I heard uh, 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 Toop yeah. and started hearing Toop in the, in the, in the trap that, that Tip was coming with. You know what I'm saying? The rubber band man, yeah. and, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. urban legend and, you know what I'm saying? Trap music, and, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I got to get on one of these albums. Yeah. I go to album session after album session after listening session after listening session. Finally get right before Paper Trail. Yeah. And this is when he had got locked up. And during that period that Tip got locked up, I did I'ma Do Me for Rocco. Mm -hmm. So now I done put one of his homies, one of his player partners on yeah. the map. You see what I'm saying? And he was like, when I went, when he got out, I had to go through the approval and whatnot, go to Tip house. He greet me at the door like, what up? I like, what up, King? I like, he was like, nah, you the king. I like, what? King calling me the king? Like, it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? And he's just like, man, yeah, man, that's what kings do. We blessed. We put people on, you know what I'm saying? Everything you did for Rocco, man. That jamming, man. I love the album. He was just talking about the beats and whatnot. I played tip 30 beats. He picked out 27. I ended up with four on the album. This yeah. biggest album mm -hmm. of tip career. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So you never know how those moments going shape and form, you know what yeah. I'm saying, into into later moments down yeah. the time of your career. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And 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 to go back to the trap like Gotti, uh Gucci, mm -hmm. Jeezy, T I. Yeah. That's 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 the making of trap. Yeah. And 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 what it has become yeah. between those 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 four people. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you, um how much credit do the producers should get for uh, creating and blowing up uh, trap music as well? Because, like on said, the producer the, side of those trap, those artists usually are the ones people debate about who started trap music. But yeah, see, like if you go back into Crunk yeah. and get Buck, get Crunk. Like the origination of Crunk comes from Memphis. Mm -hmm. Get Buck, mm -hmm. get Crunk, and those are legendary uh, producers like DJ Paul. 
uh, uh, Juicy J, SMK, um, DJ Squeaky. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Like Slice T, you know, even, you know, you can throw my brother in there, you know what I'm saying? But like that's that, you know, in Jazzy, like the whole Jazzy thing was more like player. Yeah. Funk and, yeah. and, 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 you know, just spacious, you know what I mean? It was like, you know what I mean? Ball and G was pimping. Mm -hmm. Everything was space age pimping, you know what I mean? Like, like Three Six Mafia was crunk. You know what I mean? And then Lil John took crunk and just took it to crunk music, like like yeah. everything high energy club, mm -hmm. as opposed to the crunk that we was doing, get bucked, it was like lock them in a trunk. It was like yeah. underground, more sound crunk. You know what I mean? And some of the trap sounds like the booms, the claps, come from that Memphis sound. Mm -hmm. That that them hard hitting 808s. You know what I mean, and 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 you know those hi hats and opens and things of that nature. That that come from like a lot of the three six mafia kits, yeah. them slice T yeah. kits. You know what I mean. Um, and then even you could take some of those same booms and claps from Lil John or or a DJ Toon and still have them same trap sounds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And and like I would say, Toon, uh, Fat Boy, Zaytoven. Myself, um, Shorty Red. Red, and you know what I mean? It's like give or take, you know what I mean? I, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was inspired from the organized noise. Yeah. You know what I mean? All of these was, was the guys ahead of us, you know what I'm saying? So I would, I would say that's like the core Yeah. on the production side, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Shorty Red, Toon. Fat Boy, Zaytoven, myself, and uh, I throw in Midnight Black. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For real. Like, Midnight Black was my fire on the trap. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of guys. Like, I can't even think of everybody, but it, it's, it's, it's some old guys that was in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely competing at the time. Um, and, and it kind of just evolved to the next. Yeah. And evolved to the next, and evolved to the next, and trap just took up. I remember going to Germany, folks making drummer boy type beats. I remember <laughs> going to Russia. I remember going to Belgium. Everywhere I go, um, shout out to Henke, New School Rules. I went over there with DJ Trauma, mm -hmm. and this was like '07. Wow. You know what I mean? And when I, you know I put on for my city, and all of that was was coming, and it was like just seeing how many people was making drummer boy type beats. Like if you just go on the internet and type drummer boy type beat, it's millions. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it, if you just type me a drummer boy kit, like people getting kits, all these engineers who throughout my time have yeah. worked with me and got a session with the splits or whatnot, <laughs> they probably the ones who made the kits because I ain't never made a kit in my life. Oh, no. People come up to me every day, man, bro, your kit <laughs> saved my life, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? But it, I, I look at it like flattery. Like I wouldn't even yeah. want the money off of that. Like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Just the fact that people doing it, let me know. I used to look at Dr. Dre like, damn, Dr. Dre got his own kit. That to me let me know, okay, you done made it. Yeah. And when you got your own kits and, they, and, and, and you ain't even officially made one, so when I officially make my first motherfucking kit, nigga, whew, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. Everyone wanted those sounds. Yeah. yeah. All right, and can you talk about um, this run you had from like 2008 to 2010, where it seemed like you were featured on everyone's album, at least down south. Um, yeah. Would you say that was like one of your best runs that you had recently? Um, during 2007 to 2010, I would say like, you know, it was just like a time period where everybody was, was reachable. Okay. You know what I mean? Like when you got everybody right here who popping all at one time yeah. and right now, like, you know, it's different areas popping. So it's more so about traveling, like, you know what I'm saying? And, and I feel like I'm doing similar to that. It's just in a different form and fashion. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Where a lot of people, they like, now you got no credits. Yeah. Back in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, you had credits, people paying attention to credits, reading booklets, whatnot. Mm -hmm. they, they showing who the producer is. They giving producer of the year awards yeah. and whatnot. You know what I mean? And it's only certain award shows that's yeah. doing that now. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's only certain booklets that's giving you that credit outside yeah. of an artist putting it on their Instagram yeah. or their Facebook and things of that nature. So, you know, you just gotta pay attention more, you know what I mean? But 
the publishing checks are expanding, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we, we've built a complete new library. And now um, I think the difference more so from 2007 to 2010, you make some good money. Like, like making two, three million a year as a producer that you know that's what we were averaging in 2007 yeah. to 2010 but now i've turned that into other businesses yeah. that now i'm expanding and doing even bigger numbers than yeah. 2007 and 10. Mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying and now i'm able to monetize organize and develop under my own umbrella mm -hmm. so okay yeah i made a lot of other labels yeah I paid the bills at a lot of labels for real. We got people come to me, man, you paid the bills over there for about six months, boy, with that record, boy, I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? So if I can do that for them, I know I can do that for myself. Yeah. I seen a, uh, I seen what Russell Simmons did, just just seeing what he did with one artist. LL Cool J built Def Jam, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And seeing how many artists got a chance. Shout out to Danny Lee. We need to work, man. You know what I'm saying? Artists like that and just seeing what Def Jam is doing now. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a full powerhouse. Yeah. So those are the things that I'm more so interested in doing now yeah. and blessing the artists under the label, Drum Squad, uh, Records. We just dropped our collective project. It's the collective project on uh, all music platforms. Definitely check that out, download that, and it gives you a complete roster yeah. of uh, our artists. All right, how have the changes in the way music is uh, listened to now, mostly through streams, affected the producers? Especially with them being I think streams, at first streams were straight digging us, man. Like streams that, you know, streams was free at one point. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And just to have all of this whole world of people listening to our music for free, we weren't getting paid shit. Uh, it was, it was kind of like a slap in the face as opposed to what we were getting when you buy a hard copy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then, okay, we're gonna give y'all something. Yeah. Okay, then we're gonna give y'all a little bit more. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then we're gonna give y'all a little bit more. Like, even now, when you do a million streams, you're only making fucking 4,000 bucks. Yeah. For real. So, you know, it's still a slap in the face. It's still like, damn, for real. Yeah. But you kinda gotta grow with it. And you gotta sign these petitions as they come along to argue and fight for more money. You know what I mean? Cause, they're getting paid $9.99 or whatever for the service yeah. monthly. And they allow you to listen to everything you want to mm -hmm. and whatnot. But I feel like, you know, it's got to be some kind of barrier somewhere. Yeah. Now that you've gotten all of that access money, you've gotten all of the, 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 the pluses um, for so long, I feel like it should be about time if it's 50-50. It's, it's um, so you got to be smart about how you market, promote, and get your money elseways. And, yeah. and that's, again, I'm a, I'm a key stickler for um, multiple revenue stream yeah. and, 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 and marketing in different uh, um, ways and uh, on different platforms mm -hmm. that are cross-branding. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, again, goes to the importance of relationships, getting to know the, 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 the TuneCore CEO, yeah. getting to know... Mm -hmm the Spotify CEOs in Sweden and things of that nature, taking the time to go to Sweden, you know what I mean? But then it it, it, it goes back to even having a passport, yeah. which is a whole nother conversation, especially in black America, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, you can, you can it's, it's a lot of different conversations that, that, that kind of help mold your overall goal, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and, and the ones that put themselves in the best, position to do so are the ones who win it, you yeah. know what I mean? And taking advantage of, you know, the streaming platforms. Yeah. Cause I, I think touching people faster, playlists, I've been making playlists since 2010. Yeah. I dropped my first playlist. So playlists, I've been, you know, seeing that, 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 that mind frame and giving people a, a collective body of work that is, is diverse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even when you're in a clothing store listening to music or in a grocery store or whatever, you never hear the same artist song in, within an hour. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And those are like key tactics that kind of, yeah. you know, get away from radio. Because mm -hmm. radio, you might hear the same artist oh, yeah. <laughs> five, six, seven times in an hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, then, you know, playlists started to come where you could start mixing up and, 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 and put.
putting a collective body of work together where it's different artists and not yeah. so redundant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it took off. You know what I mean? iTunes capitalized, Apple Music capitalized, Tidal, Spotify, and all the other music platforms. I think it's a genius idea, but you know what I mean? It's, it's only going to get better in time yeah. as far as how we're paid, the songwriters, the producers, the artists. Yeah. Um, but it will get better. Yeah. And what about getting your credit? Um, is that important for producers still? Too? Getting your credit comes down to hiring a publicist in this day and era. You know what I mean? If you don't have a publicist that is, you know, pushing you to blogs, pushing you on red carpets. Hey, this is drummer boy, producer of such and such, producer of such. Oh, that's drum. Oh, and, and now because people see you more, now you have more opportunities. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, it's really simple. So, you know, if you're making, let's say, 100, 200,000 a year, or, you know, you just get a $500,000 check for a publishing deal or whatnot. Why would you not hire a publicist mm -hmm. for $1,500, $2,500 a month? You know what I mean? But you're getting all of these different avenues, mm -hmm. platforms, blogs, yeah. events, red carpets, good looks. You know, my publicist did my deal with the Atlanta Falcons. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And next thing you know, I'm DJing for the Atlanta Falcons. You know what I mean? It worked one step yeah. into one thing. Okay, they needed some music for one slot one day. Yeah. And then that turns into, hey, you know I DJ too. You know, yeah. I, I do this too. Hey, you know I do this too. And then bam, you in with the family. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it's about having that publicist who can get you in those those places yeah. and, and work those, uh, you know, whatever your, your aspirations are. Yeah. If you want to be a part of baseball or... You know, you want to be um, uh, part of a battery company, you know, a PR or an agency yeah. can help you get that deal or help you get that Colgate. You got a pretty smile, do yeah. Colgate commercials. There's so many different different platforms yeah, that you that can is. align yourself with. Yeah. And as a producer, you could do TV commercials, film commercials, jingles, yeah. and, and get, I did a Chew Carnival's TV commercial and made 600000 <laughs> So it's just like, and it was a 30 second and a minute slot. Yeah. So that's still shorter than, than minute. three minutes yeah. on somebody's album that I might make twenty or thirty thousand yeah. up front, made some good upfront money, but the album didn't go gold or platinum, so yeah, the publishing exactly. is just like yeah. a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Open up that door, that's why I swear yo. Everywhere I go, that's why I swear yo. I got my bands on, hundred grand up. See my crypto, that's why I swear yo.